Hello, I'm Jeff. My wife and I host Message of Hope. Message of Hope wants to be your weekly inspirational, motivational, and non-judgmental friend to help you through your week as we share Bible truths and life experiences to let you know you're not alone. Let's join Sandra to see what Message of Hope she has today. Hey guys, it's Sandra. Today, we're talking about appreciating our differences. Do you ever let your own thoughts about yourself, your own self-set limitations because of the way you think, make the decisions for you on whether or not you're capable or good enough to do something? Today, I have a special guest, my son Matt, and he's going to share with you on this subject, and then I'll come back and we'll talk some more. Go ahead, Matt. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew. Back in August of 2015, Um, I felt compelled and I felt my heart being tugged. God knowing that I always desired to sing, but I was always too scared based on the way that my voice sounds. And I always let that limit or restrict the things that I would do for the Lord. And then one day, sitting in my cell, praying, a thought come to mind and I immediately prayed and asked God to Shine a light on what he was trying to tell me. And this is what I wrote. I've always wanted to sing a new song of my own, but can never find the words, and when I do, I'm worried about how I will sound. And then that day, sitting in my cell, the thought came to my mind. Just praise God for all that he's done. So I just wrote a simple song called Praise God, and I would like to share that with you today. It goes like this. Praise God, praise God, praise God for all he's done. Praise God, praise God, praise God for all he's done. See, it's quite simple. When we allow our carnal minds to get in the way of what God is trying to reveal to us, We are cut off by the limitations and standards that we set as a society. I want to challenge and encourage you to go beyond limitations and boundaries because God does not have a standard. He is God. You can do anything you set your mind to and do not let the devil put fear in your heart. You are wonderfully, beautifully made and God wants to hear from all his people despite what we believe we sound like. I was made, created, and given this voice. Who am I to say I cannot glorify God by singing? I hope this encourages you. I love you, and I will see you soon. Wow, Matt, that was a simple yet very powerful explanation of how we limit God with our thinking. And I thank you for sharing that with us today. What especially stood out to me was when you said, God gave you your voice, so who are you to make the decision? or to limit your use of it. And why do we do this? Well, I don't know about those of you listening today, but I have certainly been guilty of this in many areas of my life, letting doubt and fear sneak into my thoughts. God, he knows our humanness and that we do this. So he left us instructions, directions, and advice. And where do we find that? in his word. So let's look at 1 John 3, 18 through 20, which reads, My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality. It's also the way to shut down debilitating self-criticism, even when there is something to it. For God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. Amen. That right there tells us if we are feeling led to do something and we believe it is from God himself, who are we to question it? Just like Matt shared, God knows us better than we know ourselves. Do we really think the good father would ask his children to do something he knows you're not capable of? 
Let's look at Romans 8, 5-17. Those who think they can do it on their own end up measuring with their own moral muscle, but never get around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's action in them, that God's Spirit is in them, a living and breathing God. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, a spacious, free life. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God and ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is and what he is doing, and God isn't pleased at being ignored. But if God himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the Spirit of Christ, won't know what we're talking about. But for you who welcome him, in whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be alive as Christ's. So don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent? There's nothing in it for us. Nothing at all. The best thing to do is give it a decent burial and get on with your life. God's spirit beckons. There are things to do and places to go. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expected. Greeting God with a childlike, What's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is, and we know who we are, father and children. And we know we're going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him. Praise God! All of that right there was straight from the Bible. That's saying, don't measure your own abilities. If you're obsessing on these things, then your focus is on yourself and not God. Because when we're focusing on self, we're ignoring God and what he is trying to do for us or through us. He has things for us to do and places for us to go. And he wants us to have childlike faith to not doubt But just ask, what's next, Father? Just as Matt said, he asked in prayer about always wanting to sing a song, but worrying about how he would sound to others, and how we let our thinking get in the way of what God is trying to show us. If our fear or our focus is on other people and what they might think, We won't step out and do what God is wanting us to do. For this, let's look at 1 John 3, 1 through 3, which reads, What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously, because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. And that's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is 
that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him, and in seeing him, become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming, stay ready with the glistening purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. Amen. So while that right there is still encouraging us, it lets us know that being called as a child of the Almighty God means that we are different from those who don't believe. The world won't really know us or take us seriously. That's the same way Jesus was treated, and we are becoming like him as we step out in faith and do what he calls us to do. So know up front, you will have some opposition, but you can have courage to do it afraid because you will be rewarded by God himself. It's then that the naysayers, the doubters, the unbelievers will wish that they had let the Father into their lives the way that we have. I want to share one more set of scripture, one that most everyone knows by heart, but one that needs to be really thought about as it pertains to our topic today of appreciating our differences. And it starts in John 3, 16. And I'm going to read through verse 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So, like Matt shared with us, seek God's will. Tell him your desires. He wants us to have fellowship with him and he will steer us into doing what might be considered uncomfortable before we do it. But as we learn to rely on him more and more, and as we step out, he will give us the desires of our heart as promised in Psalm 37, 4. Amen. Amen. We hope this podcast helped you today to lay down your fears, pick up the encouragement and the hope, the truth and the everlasting life that is found when we follow our master. We ask if you enjoy our show, that you like and or share it, so we can continue to bring encouragement and hope through God's holy word. Also, check out our blog at msgofhope.com. Now, give me just a second to say a prayer over you that was given to the sons of Aaron, saying, This is how you are to bless the people of Israel. It's found in number six. Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until next week, Shalom.